In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a vine wet in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem, people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. 
I will break down its walls, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are as pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned, and received and heard, and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Several of our readings today speak of the harvest time. Last week we heard, preserved in Paul's letter to the Philippians, what I suggested may be the earliest hymn in the New Testament. This week we hear another hymn, or song really, not a hymn. It's a harvest song, and it's in the book of Isaiah. Perhaps it was a song that was sung locally, or perhaps Isaiah has taken the theme of typical harvest songs and has used it to portray a prophetic message. He begins, let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it, cleared it of stones, planted it with choice vines, built a watchtower in the midst of it, and hewed out a wine vat in it, expecting it to yield grapes. At this point, those who heard the prophet speak must have thought, He's in a good mood today, but it didn't hold. Instead, it yielded wild grapes. And here comes the prophetic message. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, Why did it yield wild grapes? I will tell you what I will do to it. I will remove its hedge and devour it, break down its walls, trample it down, making it a waste, and the rain will come no more upon it. And at that point, they're probably all saying, we knew it couldn't stay happy. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed. 
expected righteousness, but heard cries. The psalm also picks that up. And Jesus himself in the gospel, almost as if he was thinking, and perhaps he was, when he came up with this parable of that hymn that Isaiah had used 700 years earlier, of a landowner planting a vineyard, leaving it out, and when it came time for the harvest, one after another did not get results, just like so many of the prophets. And finally, he says, I'll send my son. They respect him. But it went no better with the son than it, would with the, than it had with the others. And so Jesus ends up by telling them, and I'm sure before he made the final point, they knew what he was saying. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. And Paul tells us quite beautifully and poetically about the fruits of the kingdom that God wants. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there's any excellence and anything worthy of praise, think about all of these things and keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen, and the God of peace will be with you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And together we place all of our needs and all of our prayers before God, our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis and those participating in the current synod, that they will help the faithful to appreciate the doctrines of our faith and our tradition. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for our Bishop Christian, for our diocesan family of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for our country, Canada, and all our natural riches, that they may be shared more equitably and especially with families, we pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for families who bring new life into the world and nurture children and give us hope, we pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for families and health workers who care for and heal the sick, we pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. For any special needs and intentions you have brought here today, 
and for the people you carry in your hearts and memory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, Joseph Stephen, Marjorie Donovan, Eleanor Casey, and Sister Elb Isabella Geddes Fivey, Sisters of Charity. And for anyone mourning the death of a family member or friend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for the, the victims of the war in the Ukraine and for those who have died today in the Middle East. For them we pray to the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for the gift of this land we call home, for the faith we call our own, for the families, parents, children, spouses, grandchildren whom we love so much, and for all the blessings that you have given to each of us. We bring our needs and prayers for them before you. Watch over us all through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please be seated while our offertory is gathered. And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your command and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. 
And so, as with the, all of the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we are claimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Teresa Como, Marilyn Boyce, Gary Lichty, Cecilia Boyd, Doug Heber, Ines McGovern, 
and Ralph Howler Jr., and all the deceased members of their families, as well as all of the souls in purgatory. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy 
that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. I wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving weekend and blessings on each of you and your families. The Lord be with you, and bow down your heads. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his countenance and give you his peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and go in peace. <clears throat>